There are many places that are used as iconic settings for horror films. You have the abandoned mansion, the graveyard setting, the house at the end of the street, and so on. But the one that's been used that can be traced to real life more times than you think is that of an abandoned hotel. After all, if a hotel isn't kept up to the standards that it needs to be, then all of a sudden you have a very spooky setting, or you could build the hotel on grounds that it wasn't meant to be on. With that in mind, here now are the 20 strangest abandoned hotels in the world. Number 20. Ryugyong Hotel We'll start with a hotel in North Korea that is really hard to pronounce. It's a strange place in and of itself due to the rulers that have made the country one of poverty for many and yet for wealth within the royal family. But that's another matter entirely. Over the years, South Korea has been the place where you get to see great expansion and growth and the making of various wonderful structures, but North Korea, well, not so much. which is actually where this hotel comes into play, because it was their attempt to try and make something that was really grand, and the result, though, was the Hotel of Doom. The building was going to be 1,000 feet high and able to house over 3,000 people, making it a true monument of the North Korean people and their ability to build. Within almost no time at all, though, the hotel wasn't only abandoned, it was also windowless. For real, construction simply stopped two years after it began, and as a result, the structure just loomed there, hence the nickname that it was given. Eventually, the windows would be put in, but the construction was never truly finished. Still close to this day, this hotel is the world's tallest unoccupied building. Which is obviously a shame, because if it were to be finished, it would be very much a bright spot for a country that doesn't get a lot of good days because of its oppressive regime. But then again, you could argue that the hotel wouldn't be that successful anyhow, thanks to the poverty of the nation, not to mention outsiders aren't exactly the most welcome in North Korea as a whole. So no matter how you look at it, this hotel is going to be remembered for a lot of things, and pretty much none of them are good. This is the cursed hotel that's never had a single guest. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Marconi Conference Center This is the Marconi Conference Center, a fascinating yet nearly forgotten piece of radio history nestled in the hills near Marshall, California. It was built to house Marconi employees, but ended up acting as a clubhouse for a new age cult. That took a turn for the worse pretty quickly, wouldn't you say? This all began with Marconi himself, who is widely considered to be the creator of the radio. He hired someone to make the radio receiving station that he wanted, and then to make certain buildings around it, one of which was the hotel for the employees. There were actually two cottages for the chief engineer and the assistant, an operations building, and a powerhouse for electric transformers and batteries as well. The hotel itself was so great that it became a focal point of sorts for the entire receiving station. In addition to its 35 rooms, the hotel boasted such comforts as a library, game room, lounge, and dining hall. So it was a very nice place, but how in the world did it go from a radio station hotel to a cult headquarters? Well, let's just say that it didn't happen overnight. In fact, it was due to World War I that caused the military to take the place over, which would have ripple effects in big ways, and after the war, the place became a rehab center. Except that people who ran that rehab center weren't exactly the nicest people around. They eventually made a church for themselves, and apparently had their male and female patients go through some really bad things, until finally they were shut down and their leader would be arrested. But arrested for what? Well, attempted murder. For the record, though, the hotel was eventually renovated and the land was turned into a park. Number 18. Igloo City now I'm going to talk about a classic in human thinking, 
That being interesting idea, bad execution. You see, in Alaska, there are a lot of myths about the native people and what they do and don't do. One of the biggest one happens to be about igloos. Many people think that Alaskans live in them on the regular, and if you were to actually go and ask an Alaskan about that, they'd tell you that they don't for the most basic of reasons. I mean, why would you want to when you can have a regular home? Igloos were always emergency shelters, or ones that were done out of need on a long trip, and that's about it. But someone had the brilliant idea to actually make a hotel that was in the shape and feel of an igloo. What could possibly go wrong, right? Located at mile marker 188.7 on the east side of the George Parks Highway, this abandoned hotel is south of Denali National Park and Preserve, and it's truly a tourist destination all in itself. Because it's just sitting there doing absolutely nothing at all, and most definitely not having any guests within it. Igloo City would be constructed in the late 1970s by Leon Smith. He envisioned it as a hotel, though it was never completed due to code violations. One of the ironies of the Igloo Hotel is that it was busted in code violations, not for something big, but for something quite small. In this case, small windows. Yeah, this place was not allowed to be born as a hotel because they made a mistake and didn't make the windows big enough. So why does it still stand today? Well, apparently it's too big to demolish, which is true to an extent because airplanes can see this thing from tens of thousands of feet up. So as I said before, it's a nice idea, but it's a bad way of going about it. Number 17. The Book Cadillac Hotel if that sounds like an odd name for a hotel, you should know that it was actually named after a fur trader and not a car. Anyways, the hotel itself is found in Detroit, Michigan, and has a very unique history in both the good and the bad ways. The building, patterned after New York City's Statler Hotel, would be designed in the Italian Renaissance style, thus giving it a high-class feel that would obviously bring in many people during the 1920s when the hotel was completed. In fact, it wasn't just beautiful, it was rather large and was for a time the largest hotel in the world. Inside were 1,136 rooms, the Italian garden room with a two-story glass ceiling, and electronic lighting controls that modified the ceiling to resemble a sunny day, a starlit evening, or a thunderstorm which is honestly a lot of detail to put into the building, but clearly they wanted it to stand out. For years, it would be an enchanted place, but the history of Detroit that followed wouldn't be as kind, because between the Great Depression and the Second World War, and various racial riots and movements that happened in the city, the hotel began to decline, to the point where it kept trading ownership, kept getting promises of being built up, and nothing came out of it. The city at one point even said they were going to demolish it because it was too expensive to renovate, but that order would be reversed, and in 2008, after $200 million spent, the hotel was reborn. Not exactly how everyone planned it, no doubt, but sometimes you just have to take what you can get, you know? Number 16. Japanese Love Motels there's a reason that people like to joke, and sometimes not really joke, about Japan. Because the country has gone through various phases in its history that honestly makes you wonder at times if we're even talking about the same country as a whole. For example, you could imagine the samurai and lords of the feudal age trying to understand what J-pop is. I don't think so. Anyways, in modern Japan, there's a lot of liberty that's given to a certain social interaction. That's part of what makes places like Tokyo a must-see, because there's so much to do, no matter what kind of person you are. That also includes love motels. Now, in places like America, these would be the hotels motels that couples or illicit couples would go to in order to, well, you know, have that special cuddle and all. But in Japan, they have scores of these motels all around so that couples can go in and out as they please. And usually these places have themes set around them to help set the mood. If
If you've ever watched the movie The Wolverine, Logan and Mariko have to house up in one for the night, and it's needless to say kind of hilarious. But when you find one of these love motels that are shut down, it honestly looks kind of creepy. Especially when you gaze at the various decorations that were to set the mood, and yet now they're not in pristine condition, and a little freaky, and not in that kind of way that the hotel would want it to be. This honestly serves as a really good lesson, if you will. Lighting and setting are very important in various kinds of buildings, so if you're not able to maintain the look, things are going to fall apart. Can you feel the love tonight? Number 15. Hotel Belvedere du Rayon Vert as I noted, time and upkeep can help determine whether a once glorious thing would be considered creepy or strange by today's metrics, and in France, the Hotel Belvedere du Rayon Vert is another classic example of this. It would be built in the 1920s and was actually positioned above a railway track which isn't something you hear about too often, if I might be frank, but it was meant to set a tone due to how the hotel was designed. If you look hard enough, you'll see that it kind of looks like a ship, so thus it's floating above the train station so it won't get hit. It once had its own tennis court on the roof and boasted a state-of-the-art cinema, which still remains as it was the day that it was built 100 years ago. Now granted, it's not exactly a place that you go to in order to watch a movie, but the option is there. The point of the hotel was to help to be a stopping spot for those who were traveling across the continent, and you could, for example, have this as your stop-off point when you were going to one part of Europe to a place like Spain. Even back then, everyone wanted to be comfortable when they traveled. The Spanish Civil War and the Second World War would end this glamorous epoch for the Belvedere, and the hotel would spend the next few decades slowly falling further and further into ruin. The irony, though, is that not only is it still there, it's slowly being renovated and then rented out. Yes, the place isn't even fully out of work yet, and the family who owned it back then still own it now. It's still very strange, but sometimes strange things do bring in the customers. Number 14. Divine Lorraine Hotel We'll now head to Philadelphia where a long-standing hotel is still abandoned to this day, and the mystery of the hotel is one that many people still like to talk about. This is the story of the Divine Lorraine Hotel. Architect Willis Hale was known for his unique Victorian designs and sturdy engineering. He worked on the Divine over the span of two years, from 1892 to 1894. It was his use of certain materials that would ensure the foundations of the building would never rot or get a bunch of mold on it. That would help to keep it upright for the years to come, for better and for worse. Originally built as a housing complex, the Lorraine apartments were intended for Philly's upper-class residents, which says a lot about things back then as well as now, wouldn't you say? This is where things get weird, though, because eventually the hotel was bought by a reverend named Divine. He opened the hotel doors to all people so that they could have comfortable, affordable homes. The twist was that they had to follow a strict set of rules that were very evangelical in nature. His followers actually became the influence for a cult later on who would cause a mass suicide. Eventually, the place was sold again in 1999, and since then, it's been one where urban explorers can go to try and see what's inside and get some insight into its history. The hotel eventually is set to be turned into apartments, but for now, it's set to be a hotel again. Whether that actually happens at this point is anyone's guess. Number 13. Huladovo Palace Hotel in 1968, work would commence on a new luxury hotel on the large Croatian island in the Adriatic Sea. This was the beginning of the Huladovo Palace Hotel. The goal was actually a bit altruistic in nature. The hotel was going to lure in the rich people from the West. But why? Oh, that's so they could spend their money in the country of Yugoslavia. It's an interesting idea, and it did get the attention of one man who would both expand it and seal its fate. Bob Guccione, the owner of Penthouse Magazine, invested $45 million into the resort, allowing it to build a glamorous casino, which in and of itself is not all that odd, as many hotels in certain countries do have casinos. But the twist, though, is that this was loaded with penthouse girls who were meant to be there for the high 
high paying customers and to ensure that they didn't leave without dropping a lot of money. In fact, there were rumors that it was built to be so luxurious that it would have a swimming pool filled with champagne. That's a little bit of overkill in my mind, but you know, you gotta give the people what they want. Anyways, the problem here was manyfold, and within just one year, the casino went bankrupt and was forced to shut down. Then, the Yugoslavian Civil War took place, and any attempt to get high rollers to the hotel was dead in the champagne waters. Now, the hotel simply sits abandoned, a once luxurious spot that is now nothing more than a memory of an attempt to make things better. Number 12. Grand Hotel E. Balneario I promise you that the first part of this story is true, despite how fairy tale like that it may sound. In 1906, Manuel Abril Ochoa became ill in the digestive tract and traveled to San Miguel de los Baños seeking help. He recovered by bathing and drinking the area's sulfur water, which has long been thought to have natural health benefits. As he was cured of his woes, he became entranced with the small town and decided to not only live there, but also to expand it by creating a hotel. The Grand Hotel Balneiro San Miguel de los Baños was completed in 1929 and opened in 1930. The resort featured three floors of private bedrooms, a restaurant, a cafeteria, a ballroom, offices, and a general shop, along with a sprawling outdoor garden. But the thing that it was really famous for was its spas that had multiple kinds of healing methods. It was so famous, in fact, that in 1961, the infamous rebel Che Guevara came there to get healed for his asthma. But the good times were not to last, because eventually the land that the hotel was on was ceded to the Revolutionary Army at the time. The hotel did get reopened once, but it didn't last very long. Now the hotel is abandoned, and while some would like to reopen it, it would cost quite a bit of money to do so, as the hotel is very much fallen into disrepair. In other words, the hotel isn't all that healthy right now. Number 11. Revel Casino Resort if you were to point out the big casino cities in the United States, you would obviously point to Las Vegas in Nevada. However, you could also point to Atlantic City in New Jersey. Both spots have a history, but in Atlantic City, that history is dying, with the Revel Casino Resort being a great example about how spending big money on new resorts there can leave you bankrupt. The Revel Casino Resort was meant to be the shot in the arm to the city that would help revitalize the industry in the area. It cost 2.6 $6 billion to construct and was New Jersey's second biggest building at the time. So how could such a thing fail so quickly and now lie abandoned? Well, as in all things, poor planning and money management, including a $932 million loss before the casino had even opened in 2012. Not to mention there were all sorts of safety issues that actually killed some of the workers, but also hurt several guests. The resort was in such trouble that it had to file for bankruptcy twice. Eventually, due to multiple factors, the resort was shut down and then abandoned. Sometimes the best of efforts just isn't good enough when just about everything is working against you. Number 10. El Hotel del Salto while I've definitely shown you some rather unique hotels and such, I've not really shown you one that's fully haunted in the eyes of many. Well, let's change that and bring in the El Hotel del Salto. It is indeed one of those hotels. People actually go to visit it now in its decrepit state due to how haunted that they feel it may be. This is partly to do with a nearby place known as Taekwondama Falls. <laughs> a place to the local people of Bogota know very well because of the tales of people trying to escape their Spanish captors by jumping off the falls 500 plus feet so that their spirits would fly away. The hotel that was created near there soon became one that was tied to the legend as certain people and guests partook in that act, thus causing a dark cloud to hang over the hotel itself. Plus, the falls actually caused the hotel to rot to the degree that it had to be abandoned, and now many claim that the spirits from the falls are residing there. Number 9. Kupari Tourist Complex 
Believe it or not, this is another hotel complex in Yugoslavia, but one that was made for a more militaristic purpose, because when these hotels were constructed, they were for the officers in the Yugoslavian army. When the Croatian War for Independence would break out in the 1990s, The hotel was one of the places that was targeted by them, and it would eventually be heavily damaged. This would lead to various raids on the place to take out the items of value. Eventually, the land and the hotel would be bought, and as a result, well, nothing happened. It was abandoned and still remains that way to this day. Number 8. Coco Palms Resort of all the places that you may expect to find an abandoned resort, I would bet that you wouldn't say Hawaii. After all, it's a tropical paradise, and not exactly a place that isn't always in need of hotel rooms. But for the Coco Palms Resort, not only is it abandoned, nature is slowly taking it back. The hotel was made famously by the Guslanders and is such a paradise place to live in that it was featured in many movies in the mid-1900s, not the least of which was one called Blue Hawaii, which starred a guy named Elvis Presley. However, a hurricane would eventually come knocking at its door, and the hotel was damaged beyond repair. People did try to fix it, mind you, but it never lasted, and as such, this once major hotspot for the celebrity elite now stands in ruins, and it will take a whole lot to get it back to what it once was. Number 7. Skaltubo Skaltubo's sanatoriums and hotels were places of healing, relaxation, and entertainment, attracting tens of thousands of visitors across the Soviet Union between the years in the 1960s and the 1980s. If that sounds like a setup for a horror movie, well, I wouldn't argue with you, given what we know has happened in the Soviet Union during that time. But believe it or not, the place had healing waters that many people would swear did heal them when they came to them. And it wasn't just the average Russian or tourist, it was some of the higher-ups in the Soviet Union that came to partake in it all. Yet ironically, once the Soviet Union fell, so did this hotel. Though some people still sought shelter in it during key times of war, and apparently some people even still live in it now, despite it not being a hotel anymore. Number 6. Bokor Hill Station Heading now to Cambodia, we look at Bakor Hill Station, which was built by the French in 1921 in the Damri Mountains. It was built as a mountain holiday luxury resort and retreat for the French colonial elite. 900 people actually died during its construction, which is already enough to make it clear that this place was doomed to fail from the beginning, but I digress. The hotel itself had everything from a casino to a church, and as such, could be very much labeled luxurious in every way. However, due to the uprisings that occurred in the nation, the hotel was not just abandoned, but was abandoned several times over. Number 5. Ducor Hotel the Decor Hotel is an abandoned luxury hotel in Monrovia, Liberia, and it was a very big place, just so you know. It had a height of eight stories and over 106 rooms within. The building sits on Decor Hill, the highest point in the city overlooking the Atlantic Ocean, and so you could definitely have quite a view from there as you went and stayed in it. The hotel would be used for various meetings in Africa amongst its leaders, which shows just how important it was to a great many people. However, due Due to unrest, the place would be abandoned in 1989, which was just before a coup was occurring in the local area and started the Liberian Civil War. Despite it being abandoned, people did actually live in it, but they were squatters, ones who were eventually evicted by the government. Number 4. Lee Plaza Hotel I've already been to Detroit once before, but now we're going back due to some very recent news about one of their former premier hotels. The Lee Plaza Hotel was once one of their best high-rises, and yet it was eventually abandoned and remained in Detroit for some time. Fast forward to the year 2022, and it would be revealed that the high-rise would be taken down to make room for affordable housing. Whether this plan is indeed a win for all who are involved remains to be seen, but if nothing else, that's one less abandoned hotel in the world. It's said to feature more than 100 units of senior affordable housing, and it's also going to preserve a historic Detroit landmark at the same time. Number 3. Diplomat Hotel 
In the rolling hills above the Philippines' summer capital, the Diplomat Hotel stands crumbling and forlorn. All that's left is a shell of what was once a high-end hotel, which since the 1980s has lain completely abandoned. But here's the very dark twist. It's apparently haunted due to the various crimes and events that have happened there. There were literally massacres that occurred in the hotel during the Second World War. And then when people tried to turn it back into a hotel, well, bad things happened with it and them. There are places in the world, ladies and gentlemen, that clearly aren't meant to be built up or last long, and this is certainly an example of that. Number 2. Hunzik Hotel when a hotel's history isn't truly known, then you really have a problem, and that's only one of the problems that this hotel has had. You see, at one point in time, it was a very popular hotel due to how it had a ski jump, but why did that matter? Well, it would help to train people for the winter competition, and as such, would be able to help those who wanted to win. But then the ski jump was taken away, and such, and the business began to go down for the Hunzik. In 1999, Hurricane Lothar swept through the area and severely damaged the hotel. Due to the cost of it all, it was closed and abandoned due to the dangers of the building collapsing. Never a good thing, and it also meant that while no one really knows how and when it was built, they likely know how how it'll end in a collapse. Number 1. Grossinger's Catskill Resort Grossinger's Resort was established by a couple of Austrian immigrants whose last name is Grossinger, who relocated to the Catskill Mountains from New York City in the early 1900s. Alongside their daughter, they went from opening a simple hotel and resort to owning several dozen buildings. They honestly had a really successful place compared to some of the other hotels that you've seen in this video. But sadly, when their daughter died, things began to go downhill, and while they did their best to maintain everything, it wasn't meant to last. Eventually, the descendants of the Grossingers sold the property, and various other things happened in the buildings and the lands, which included a golf course on the land, somehow lasting in until 2018. The final building of the resort would be demolished in 2018, and as for the future of the property, that's still up for grabs. That's all from the realm of hotels, and which ones stand above the rest in terms of their strangeness? Have you ever seen an abandoned hotel that you would swear was haunted? And which of these stories did you find the most unsettling? Are there any other tales of abandoned hotels that should be on this list? Be sure to check out all the cool things that are showing up on the screen, leave a comment in the section down below, and I'll see you next time.